we've been talking about this, you know, this total dirtbag, this guy, Mark, Martin uh, Shrekley, the, uh, the farmer yeah. CEO who's, you know, I guess now he's backtracking a little bit. He's saying he's not going to raise the price of this vital AIDS drug uh, by 5,000%, which was the initial uh, number that he had tagged yeah. on it. But the thing is that, that and I, I really want to get your thought on this before we wrap up. Every time something like this happens and it's quite easy and we've done it ourselves on this show because this guy certainly, you know, it's all, it's, it's what he's done. It's his manner. I mean, he does come off like a total sociopath and a sort of like uniquely unethical and repulsive person. But when we fixate on a symptom, are we losing sight of while this is a radical and extreme example how different is this from kind of rampant price gouging across pharma itself? And frankly, in some ways, you know, if you're watching Fox Business or something, isn't this guy just like doing capitalism? So it's so weird that we, yeah, you know, you know what I'm are, saying? We are focusing too much on him as an individual, and uh, the pharmaceutical industry knows it. I read a piece on the uh, on the website of the pharmaceutical industry by a commentator who was of slapping his forehead and saying, oh, God, this is only going to bring more attention to, to our misdeeds. Every time something like this happens, it gets the press and politicians agitated. Even Hillary tweeted about it, saying that yep. she's going to do something to address it. But um, I did a segment on this yesterday morning on HuffPost Live, and I had um, Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel on it, Zeke Emanuel, who was one of the architects of Obamacare and who was one of Obama's White House <coughs> advisors, who now heads up um, health policy at UPenn. And he was saying that these are the things that we need the, the catalysts to be to get some action on controlling the price of drugs. But the United States is the only country in the world, in the rich world, the only developed country that has no mechanism for regulating the price of drugs. I mean, in countries like Australia and Canada, where you have Medicare for all, right. the, there's a pharmaceutical benefits body, which is just a panel of experts that say, that analyze the benefits and the downsides of, of drugs, and uh, they, they, they make recommendations, and they say that this is what Medicare is going to pay, and this is what it's not going to pay, and we don't think that the drug is worth more than that, and with a finite amount of money to spend, we're not going to spend it. And you know what? Drug companies cop it. They don't, they don't go bankrupt. They don't go broke. They still sell the drugs for reasonable prices. They're still able to I mean, innovate. Here, They're still able to innovate. They might just have a smaller yep. uh, bonuses and a smaller ad budget, which is where all yeah, this money goes to. The whole innovation argument is almost always BS. So, right. for example, here's, here's one example. Gilead Sciences, they developed two hep C drugs, Savaldi and Harvoni, less than two years ago. They have already recouped all of the R&D expenses for the development of those two drugs. Do you think they're bringing the prices down to cheap levels? Of course not. Right. They're going to keep on charging as high a price as they possibly can for these drugs, and they will in perpetuity, and they'll, and they'll justify it by saying... Well, I mean, the American consumer has to pay these high prices so that we can afford the innovation and the research and development on other drugs. Well, that's exactly the same bullshit that, that uh, this guy was saying when he raised the price of that drug by 5,000%. Yeah, he said that exactly. we want to find a better drug. Every doctor I've spoken to says there's no need to find a better drug because the drug that he just jacked the price up on exactly. is already does a perfectly good job. Exactly. It's like, like, well, we'll privatize your water supply and jack it up to find something better at hydrating you. I mean, it's, there has it's to be, utterly ludicrous. There has ludicrous. to be action on this. There has to be yes. some kind of... I mean, the, you know, the biggest... The worst thing that ever happened in the healthcare debate was all the rhetoric about death panels. We need death panels. We need panels that are able to say, this is worth spending money on, and that is not worth spending money on. If, if, if you could extend grandma's life by, by one day on, in, in a coma, in a hospital bed where she's not even aware of it, at a cost of a trillion dollars, would that be worth it? Would that seriously be worth it, a trillion dollars for one more day in a coma? Clearly not. So we have to start making decisions about what we want to spend money on and what we don't want to spend money on. And part of that has to do with what we're willing to, what kind of price we're willing to pay for which particular types of drugs. Yeah, but Otherwise, and, healthcare yeah. is just going to absorb the entire U.S. economy. Well, that's exactly right. But also not only that, I mean, when we, if we actually did a process like that, the primary sort of where the fat would be cut would not be on life extension and health. Because first of all, we also already know another major part of this conversation is the complete lack of emphasis placed on prevention and healthy lifestyles and things that actually sure. could fundamentally lead to, uh, you know, increasing lifespan, lowering medical costs. But the other sort of, but, but when we actually did an actual process where we attacked these treatments, 
and it was done properly and just about actual efficiencies, it would come down on pharma, it would come down on the insurance industry. I mean, if, when we're talking about things like HMOs and insurance, these are completely unnecessary and parasitic industries to begin with. But I think the takeaway from this segment here, though, is that in some ways Martin Treckley is almost like the Donald Trump of the pharma industry, and that by being so right. obscene, he's revealing the true nature of this business and giving us a roadmap for all the radical reforms we need. So I guess... Thanks, Martin. I mean, I still think you yeah. should probably be in jail, but thank you. Yeah, and I would, I would just add also, it's a common trope on the left to blame HMOs and insurance companies. Insurance companies' margins are actually surprisingly slim. The real, the real cost of American health care comes from pharmaceutical devices, yes, from pharmaceutical right. companies, drug companies, medical device manufacturers, hospitals, and actually doctors, that's which right. is... You know, it, they're harder to beat up on, but that's actually the people who are... Well, I think that that's true in terms of the prices, but I think where the beef with HMOs and insurance companies are, first of all, that's who you're primarily dealing with, who's denying you care, as an example. Uh, and then yeah. secondly, we know that, you know, you mentioned Medicare for all systems before. There isn't going to be a system in the world that doesn't exist, obviously, without doctors, medical devices, or drug companies. The necessity of having these mediating agents is highly suspect. So I think it's not right. the profit margins, it's the immediate role they play in screwing people over. And then, well, why do we even need you to begin with that triggers people so much? But I think, yep. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right about the spending margins. Josh, it's always a pleasure, man.